Well, I want to first of all thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, we appreciate you showing interest in what's going on in Harvard. Um, I want to start by introducing the Board of Education. We have Paul Petrosky, Ben Schlemmer, Beth Sob Coons, Jim Stevens, Superintendent Bob Noll, Lisa Phillipson, Superintendent, uh, Assistant Superintendent Helen Hyde, and our clerk, Betty Hyde. So I want to thank you all for all you do throughout the year because it is a lot of work and uh, we appreciate it. Uh, I want to start with some administrative things. There are agendas, I believe, in the back. That's correct. So if you don't have one, uh, feel free to grab one. And really, what we're going to do tonight is um, I'm going to give a very brief overview of the budget process. Then we're going to hear from the subcommittees that uh, partake in that process. We'll have a, uh, Mary Mandel will give a, a detailed overview of the budget. We'll open it up for questions. Uh, we ask that if you have questions, you come forward, state your name address, and uh, keep all questions for five minutes. And then we'll introduce the uh, candidates. We have two candidates running for school board, uh, Beth Sides Coombs and Alexis Aguara. And they'll each have an opportunity to address the, the audience. So uh, with that, just a, a quick overview of the budget is, it's really a year-long process and a lot of work goes into it. Uh, we start in November, just reviewing the calendar. And then really there are three main subcommittees that do a lot of the heavy lifting, and that's uh, Finance Committee, but uh, Building Grounds and Transportation and Staffing and Curriculum. And then each one of them throughout the year is looking at the needs, the wants, the, uh, you know, uh, in order to keep the school running. It all flows through to the Finance Committee. Um, and then we get to the point where we formulate the budget. So uh, that is a very quick overview of the budget process. Any questions? OK. Now I'm going to move on to uh, committee reports. And we're going to start with budget and finance and chairperson Lisa Phillips. Thank you, John. Uh, Hi, welcome, thank you all for coming. Um, I'm chairperson of the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, this committee meets to review items that affect the budget of the school district. We do this by monitoring budget activity and trends throughout the year. We are pleased to report that, according to independent auditors, the accuracy of our financial reports have the highest standard in the industry. Our committee's focus is to achieve the best possible education for New Hartford students while minimizing the expense to the district's taxpayers. To do this, we continually search for additional revenue sources that will decrease the impact on the local taxpayers and remain within the state tax levy limit. For example, we filed a race to the top grant with the state education department this spring to purchase 26 computers for classrooms. We received a Title I school dissemination grant in the amount of $45,000 to enhance best practices and mentor other districts in need. We continue to apply for retiree drug subsidy grant funding to assist with expenses related to health care costs. This year's award was for $210,000. The process for tax collection in district has resulted in additional revenue of approximately $20,000. In addition, as a result of the district's solid financial position, our above average bond rating was reaffirmed. This assisted us with obtaining a low interest rate on our bonds. Regarding expenses, we carefully look at all areas of the budget to maximize cost efficiency of programs and services. For example, the district capitalizes on group purchasing power by participating in a number of consortiums and group plans with other schools. This helps ensure the lowest price on items such as gas, electricity, workers' compensation insurance, and computer supplies. We continue to explore and implement new appropriate shared services with BOCES. And the Health Insurance Committee continues to explore and implement new cost-containing um, strategies. Last year, the district saved approximately $100,000 through RFPs for a prescription drug management firm and stop-loss insurance carrier. 
Our main goal as the financial stewards of the district is to ensure that our students and the community get the best possible value for their tax dollars. Our academic achievements and reputation locally and nationally speak volumes as to that value. I would like to thank my committee members, Paul Petrowski and Pam King, Pam King unfortunately couldn't be here tonight, for all of their hard work over this past year. And a big thank you to Assistant Superintendent for Business, Mary Mandel, for her dedication, her expertise, and her excellent fiscal planning. She and her team have helped keep New Hartford on firm financial footing, not only this year, but for the future as well. Thank you. Thank you Lisa. Uh, we're gonna switch things up a little bit to give Lisa a chance to catch her breath. And next up, uh, Beth Coombs, Building Grounds and Transportation. Uh, thanks for coming out. Um, I guess I'll start by thanking my um, fellow committee members, Ed Flemma and Paul Petrowski. Um, I'd also like to thank John Bannock, Pete Gagliano, and Andy Morgan, who also participate on bg and as well as Mary Mandel, who is our new faculty. Um, Building Grounds and Transportation Committee, affectionately known as bg and is charged with reviewing the district's facilities, grounds, equipment, and transportation operations in order to make recommendations to the full Board of Education regarding the short-term and long-term plans regarding the physical components of the school district. So the district currently maintains five school buildings, two bus garage facilities, and over 110 acres of land. The bg and committee takes pride in playing a crucial role in the overall long-term facilities plan for the district. In this past year alone, the committee has researched and acted on several important initiatives, many of which were the source of actions by this full body. These include, very exciting things, like continuing to implement energy efficiency measures to reduce the immediate and long-term cost of facilities, continued participation in regional contracts for the purchase of energy, gas, and electric supplies, which have been through a consortium of more than 150 school districts and municipalities, which save us actually hundreds of thousands of dollars. We also participate in the inspection of the buildings, grounds, and the transportation department. The committee annually reviews the physical plans and trans transportation inventories along with the proposed replacement schedules. That includes the shovels, the rates, everything. The committee hosted the full board in an inspection of each building as well as reviewing the annual fire inspection reports. Each building passed its annual fire inspections and immediate actions were taken to mitigate any outstanding concerns. An architect was appointed to conduct a building condition survey and prepare a five-year facility plan. The transportation department excelled in its state inspection and continues to provide one of the best transportation services in the state. And even though Pete Gagliano isn't in the room right now, I would also say that they had a surprise DEC inspection that they passed with Flying College as well. Supporting uh, proposition for the purchase of the new buses, we reviewed the bus proposition, which will allow the district to follow the long range bus replacement plan that was established to provide for the safety of our children and maintain efficient vehicles for the state. It's also the evaluation and implementation of all the health and safety initiatives. The 2015-16 budget continues to include resources to enhance the safety and security of our buildings, our grounds, and our buses. In addition to participating in the BOCE shared service, shared safety service, excuse me, the budget includes resources to support increased safety initiatives such as the school resource officer program, the school safety officers, for increased security coverage in the buildings district-wide, bullying prevention training and support, and upgraded security cameras on our buses. We were also selected to participate in a pilot program to utilize multiple communication tools and equipment that enable first responders to communicate and respond in real time should there ever be a need. We also have a plan to install cameras on five buses per year, which was implemented in 2012-13 and continued this year. The district will be updating its current emergency response safety plan to incorporate a plan created by the New York State Safe Schools Improvement Team and other national and federal agencies. As a result of the district safety's initiatives, safety initiatives and efforts, the district was presented with the Utica National School Safety Excellence Award in recognition of the district's commitment to safety through policies and practices. The district has been awarded the highest level, titanium level, with honors, and also received a $500 grant for use in program safety efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Now we'll turn it back over to Lisa for Stephanie and Chris. Thank you, John. Um, I have the honor of also serving as chair of the Staffing and Curriculum Committee this year. 
Um, this committee meets monthly on issues pertaining to instruction, curriculum, and staffing. Here are the highlights for the 2014-15 school year. We continue to implement New York State learning standards through continued alignment with the elementary journeys, reading program, and envision math program. We analyze student results and identify areas to assist with increasing student achievement. We continue to provide professional development in areas of guided reading and guided math. We implemented a revised elementary enrichment delta program with a focus on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and reading as well. We reviewed results in all academic areas and noted strong regents results as well as advanced placement results. We reviewed and approved the district's professional development plan, which focuses on professional development for teachers and staff. We received reports from the professional development specialist, which included 145 different offerings through the teacher center so far this year. And of those offerings, um, our teachers participated in 1,340 of these programs. We reviewed course and program changes for the 2015-16 school year. This includes a new dual credit course with MVCC, Introduction to Business, and the addition of Advanced Placement Physics II. We received reports on extracurricular student club activity. Clubs continue to reflect strong enrollment with Perry Junior High boasting 91% participation in extracurricular activities and the high school showing a strong 84%. We received school improvement plans from all building principals. The plans focus on increased student achievement and supporting best practices in the classroom. We drafted a resolution which was adopted by the entire Board of Education calling on the Commissioner of Education and the New York State Board of Regents to eliminate field testing in order to increase instructional time in the classroom. We reviewed certification status for all professional staff and examined the process for monitoring certifications. We reviewed and discussed enrollment trends as well as plans for recruitment and the hiring of all new staff members. And finally, we celebrated our ranking in the top 1% of schools by Newsweek Magazine and as one of America's top high schools by the Washington Post. And just today, we learned that New Hartford High School was recognized by U.S. News & World Report as a gold medal school, which is the highest ranking. There are more than 29,000 public high schools in the nation, and only 500 schools earn gold medal status. Our distinguished high school has been ranked 55th in New York State and 460th nationally. It has been a pleasure to serve as chair of the Staffing and Curriculum Committee for the fourth year. I would like to thank fellow committee members Ed Flemma and Jim Stevens, as well as Assistant Superintendent Alan Hyde for all of their hard work during another challenging year. Thank you. This evening, we are pleased to present to you the 2015-2016 proposed spending plan scheduled to be placed before the residents of the district on May 19th. The spending plan continues an attempt to balance the needs of multiple groups, including our students, community, teachers, and staff. The Board of Education on an annual basis adopts goals, and a major focus is to continue long-range planning. Long-range financial, personnel, facility, and curriculum plans are in place to allow our district to continue as a top-performing school district and at the same time avoid program cuts and spikes in tax rates that have hindered many school districts across the state. Our district has utilized these plans to maximize state aid, eliminate instructional, non-instructional, and administrative positions, undertake capital improvement projects, replace technology and curriculum materials in an effective and efficient manner, and finally absorb historic state aid cuts. As you know, in 2010, the state of New York faced a $10 billion budget gap. In order to close that gap, legislation was adopted to reduce state aid to school districts. And as you can see, our school district has lost 
$9 million going back to 2010-2011. The interesting thing is we currently are losing $780,000 due to the gasification adjustment, while the state of New York is projected a $4.8 billion surplus. We continue to advocate our area legislators to eliminate the gap elimination adjustment. And if you look at the next slide, you can see our funding levels in 2015-2016 are on par with what our funding levels from the state were in 2005-2006, a decade ago. Despite the aforementioned challenges, our robust programs remain intact. Um, we have uh, had uh, astronomical pension costs, and over the last six years, our average spending has increased 1%. So again, as Mrs. Phillipson mentioned, our high school continues to be recognized as one, as one of America's best high schools by U.S. News and World Report, Newsweek, and the Washington Post. These publications ranked our treasured high school in the top 1% in the nation. Finally, the proposed spending plan was a united effort of the Board of Education, faculty, staff, and administration to develop a budget that provides for the needs of students while maintaining fiscal responsibility owed to the community at large. This collaboration, along with multi-year planning, continues to assist us through economic challenges and allows us to be good stewards and responsible to multiple parties. At this time, I will turn it over to Assistant Superintendent Hyde, who will provide program and curriculum highlights. Thank you. Good evening. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you to our budget hearing tonight. I would like to highlight some of our key points in our area of curriculum and instruction. I'll start out by talking a little bit about the strong comprehensive curriculum that we have in place at our um, school here in New Hartford. We are committed to excellence for all of our students. Within this excellence, we do have shared priorities. Some of those priorities, to mention a few, are guaranteed and viable curriculum, teaching for understanding, high expectation, support for all of our learners in the classroom, and using results to inform instruction. We also have support services and extra help for all of our students at all grade levels. This includes at our high school, a math lab, as well as our elementary school, AIS services in the area of ELA and math. We have nationally and globally recognized advanced placement program at our high school. We currently offer 16 advanced placement courses Beginning in the 2015-16 school year, we will be offering 17 <coughs> advanced placement courses, and this is in the scope of science, mathematics, history, government, psychology, and world language. We also have a pre-engineering program, Project Lead the Way, which prepares our students for careers in engineering and technology. To continue with some highlights in the area of curriculum, we have four uh, foreign languages that we offer, Spanish, French, Latin, and Mandarin. We also have offerings in art and music. We have high interest electives that are offered at our high school, which include forensic science, ecology, journalism, creative writing, humanitarian law, and biotechnology. This year, we also introduced the course through Project Lead the Way, which is computer science. This year, we implemented a revised and updated elementary enrichment program, which is our Delta program in the area of literacy and STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And that's offered at all of our elementary buildings. We also have a district graduation requirement to demonstrate competence in computer applications. Moving on to opportunities for participation in extracurricular activities, we do have music and drama opportunities in marching band, choir, orchestra, symphonic band, plays, and musicals. We offer over 62 interscholastic sports for boys and girls in grades 7 through 12. We have clubs and organizations for students at all grade levels to support a variety of academic and service interests. In the area of student performance, 
We consistently outperform state averages and similar school averages on state assessments. Student participation in our nationally and globally recognized advanced placement programs at levels above the national and state average. Consistently, more than 90% of our high school graduates pursue post-secondary education exceeding state and similar school averages. Just to highlight some other factors that point to a high performing school, our attendance rate is high, our dropout rate is low, and the suspension rate is low as well. Ms. Phillipson and Mr. Knoll both had mentioned some of the national recognition that we received. We are proud of, this, of the recognitions that we've received. We are, again, we're in the top 1% of nation's schools, according to Newsweek and Washington Post. We were recognized, as we found out today, for, uh, by the U.S. News and World Report as a gold medal school. And we've also been recognized as the 2015 Best Communities for Music Education, according to NAM. In the area of professional development, we do offer a wide variety of professional development through our teacher center, which is housed at our junior high school. We have needs-based job embedded professional development that supports all of the initiatives that, take, that are in place in the classrooms. Again, all of those are offered through our teacher center. We have a strong new teacher induction program that supports our first year teachers and follows them a second and third year. We also have professional network for all of our professional <coughs> staff members. In the area of community programs, we have regular communication through our newsletters. Our newsletter is the report card. We also publish news in the local town crier. We offer a community adult education program, as well as parent workshops for all of our parents in our schools, and building and facility use as our school is the hub of our community. I would like to thank all of you again for coming out. And it's my pleasure to present all of this information to you. And at this time, I will turn the program over to Mrs. Mandel, our Assistant Superintendent for Business. Thank you. I promise I won't review this entire packet. Unless you want me to. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to review our education spending plan with you now. Uh, the proposed spending plan is a proposed budget of $49,419,245. It presents an increase in spending of 1.9% for a total dollar increase of $942,599. As many people already indicated to you, um, we're able to maintain low increases in spending as a result of our long-range plans and our cost containment initiatives. Uh, the following are some significant factors that are affecting this year's budget. You'll see detail line items for instructional and educational support salaries and benefits in the first two line items. Uh, for the salaries line item, you see an increase of $318,474. Our salaries and benefits make up approximately between 72 and 73 percent of our proposed budgets over the past six years. The salary increases for 15 and 16 of 1.49 for 1.4 percent are reflective of bargaining union, union agreements and six retirements. Uh, as Mr. Knoll indicated earlier, uh, we, we talked about the mandated retirement system benefits. Uh, finally, for the 15-16 budget, we were finally able to experience a decrease in the New York State retirement expenses. This increase, or these, this decrease, is a result of favorable markets. On the other hand, we are we are seeing increases in our health insurance costs for next year. Many of these increases are associated with the new Federal Affordable Care Act, coupled with new high-cost specialty medications. Um, those increases are affecting our health insurance plan, which is proposed to go up 9%. So the net increase in our retirement and health insurance and employee benefits is 
You'll also see an increase in our BOCES shared services of $176,191. Um, our BOCES services provide many efficiencies to us and also allow us to maximize our state aid in this area with BOCES. Uh, many services that we participate in are um, items such as uh, providing uh, services for our students with special needs, our safety program, technology purchases, us technology personnel, and printing, just to name a few. Uh, the educational supplies budget that you see supports our new curriculum initiatives that you've heard about previously, uh, professional development, many of the computer, um, some of the computer technologies that we purchased, such as elementary Lumens document cameras that we were purchasing, uh, that we purchased this year and are planning on purchasing next year, as well as many other uh, classroom instructional supplies and materials. The contractual and equipment line items include items that were also mentioned in previous reports, such as participation with other districts in the purchase of our gas and electric services. That this is the line item that you see that you see um, that budgeted. Also, our safety officers and other items that we contract with um, to maintain our grounds and facilities are included in the contractual line item of our budget. The debt service budget increase is a result of our tertiary bond and also principal and interest fluctuations on our long-term long capital borrowing. Our multi-year long-range planning assists us during the budget development process. And I'll just review a few examples. For example, our facilities planning. As part of our long-range financial facilities plans, We'll be con contracting or conducting a building condition survey this year, which will assist us with maintaining the integrity of our buildings and grounds. And also, we have long-range financial plans um, that include our cost containment initiatives. And just to name a few of those cost containment initiatives, um, that have saved the district millions of dollars over the past 10 years. For example, our self-insured health insurance plan, our new prescription drug plan provider and negotiated discounts, and our step therapy initiative for, pres pres for prescription drugs, to name a few. These initiatives have allowed us to channel the necessary budget dollars into instructional programs. Our total expenditure per pupil is approximately $3,500 below the state average, yet our budget continues to provide for the needs of our students while maintaining fiscal responsibility for our community. <coughs> the bus proposition will allow us to follow the district's long-range bus replacement plan that was established to help ensure the safety of our children and maintain efficient vehicles. We receive up to 67% aid on the purchase of our buses and it will allow us to replace buses um, that have met their useful life. Mr. Noel already talked about these. So we're good with that. I'm just going to flip through a little bit here for you. Revenues, the revenue side of the budget. Again, this year, we performed a comprehensive review of all of our revenues to maximize resources to absorb state aid cuts, such as the gap elimination adjustment that was reviewed earlier. Um, you'll see on the, the following pie graph that in 2015-16, state aid is only 27% of the revenue budget, uh, while just 10 years ago, state aid made up 35% of the revenue budget. As depicted in the pie chart, our revenues primarily come from six areas. The revenue from state aid and tax receipts make up approximately 96% of the revenue budget. The remaining 4% come from tuition, interest, refunds, and end of year balance. Some of the additional revenue highlights out of the 4% and how they are affecting our budget for next year. For example, our pilot payments will be re decreased next year as a result of two pilot agreement or payment in lieu of tax agreement reductions 
uh, one with Utica National and the other with the Water Board. Also, the tuition in Chapter 721 line items in our revenue will be decreasing next year. Um, these items, this revenue is derived from state aid for certain students uh, with special needs that are placed by the county in a residential facility that falls within our property, our property limits. Um, that, in that area, uh, we have decreased from 10 students to four, so there is a significant decrease in that revenue. Also, we continue to see decrease in interest earnings uh, for next year. And our BOCES refund, as BOCES budgets have tightened, just like school districts, uh, there, there will be less refunds for school districts, therefore that line item will be reduced as well for 2015-16. And our end of year balance, uh, these are remaining balances in funds to maintain stability during difficult economic times and unstable state aid. The culmination of all these plans has allowed for a proposed tax levy increase of 2.7%, which is below the property tax levy limit, which is for, for our district calculated at 2.97%. So our tax levy increase proposal will be 2.7%. And I'd just like to go through just a brief few highlights of what the tax levy limits are. Um, it's part of an eight-part uh, eight formula. Many people have considered a 2% tax cap. In reality, it's 1.62%, but there are many other formulas involved to come up with a number. So our tax levy limit is really 2.97%. In addition, last year, a property tax freeze law went into place. Oops, sorry. <laughs> a property tax freeze law went into place. If you recall, everyone received a check in the mail sometime in the fall or winter for the amount of increase in your taxes last year. That will continue again uh, this fall in the amount of increase in the taxes if you, in the taxes for your home, um, along with a government along with the approval of a government efficiency plan that the district has to submit by June 1st. So because we fell within the property tax levy limit, as soon as we um, hear from the state D division of budget uh, that our government efficiency plan has been approved, if, that, if those two factors come into play, then our taxpayers will receive a refund for the increase in the taxes for 2015-16 budget in addition to the refund that you received last year, 2014. In summary, the proposed budget is a culmination of several meetings and plans developed and followed by the Board of Education, administration, faculty, and staff that meets the needs of our students and our community. The budget vote in election is on May 19th in the high school gymnasium from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. where you will be presented with the budget vote, the bus referendum, and election of one candidate for a five-year term. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Okay, now I will open up for questions. Does anyone have any questions? right along to the introduction candidates. We have two seats. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I understand there are some students here that would like to speak. Come on down. I'm vice president of the senior class 
I'm president of the National Honor Society, and I'm really thankful that I'm able to come here and talk about my experiences in the high school with you. So every day I walk by the New Hartford insignia engraved on the foyer floor in the high school, and I see the crest divided into the three sections, the academics, the arts, the sports, and each of these things has played a really integral part of my high school career. Um, and I'm so thankful to go to a school where I have the academic and extracurricular opportunities that we have here. So first off, I'm just going to talk a little bit about how academics here at New Hartford have influenced me and my plans for the future. Um, well, as a kid growing up, I was pretty into culture and geography, and I guess you could say I was kind of a nerd in that way. Um, so naturally, the FLEX program uh, for Spanish in elementary school really sparked a love of languages in me that still holds true today. Um, so at other schools, I see that language programs are too often cut. And speaking from experience, as I took German in seventh grade, I can definitely say that's really disappointing. But at New Hartford, I've been able to experience so much in and out of the classroom um, with my language programs. After taking French to the AP level, I feel completely comfortable talking to native speakers, and I'm even headed to Quebec um, to attend McGill University the year after next. Um, so that's really exciting for me. <laughs> in high school, I've also decided to take Mandarin Chinese, which was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. Um, this program has opened my eyes to a whole new part of the world that we only learned a little bit about in global history class. I've been able to challenge myself with a language that is growing in importance exponentially every year. And I even had the chance to go to China my junior year with the school, where I got to stay with host families and attend school there. And it was definitely, if not the most, one of the most enriching experiences of my life. Um, I was recently accepted into a State Department program to study in China, although I have chosen to study a gap year in India. But I can definitely say, without a doubt, I would never have had any of these experiences had it not been for the unique opportunities and classes that I was able to take here at New Hartford. Um, these language classes, along with clubs like Mali Wen um, and so on, are what inspired me to major in international development um, in the coming years and hopefully being able to someday help community around the world. Um, so, all that said, I really hope that the opportunity to take classes like Mandarin will be extended um, to younger students one day, as starting next year will only be possible for students junior year and up to take this class. Um, and it's only offered up to the level two. And furthermore, furthermore, I would really just like to say that the language department has played such a vital role in my education. And I can say that it's one of the most valuable assets that I have um, as a student and one of the most valuable classes that New Hartford can, can give. Um, just a little bit more about extracurricular activities that um, I find really important. Well, as a second semester senior, I'm obviously experiencing and have experienced a lot of laughs. Um, just today, I had my last AP test, not to train. Um, <laughs> and I played in my last varsity tennis match. And, but there are two more important laughs that I would just like to touch on. One last is my last season of marching band this past year, in which I was fortunate enough to be the drum major and we also brought home the state championship crown. Marching Band is my favorite memory of every year of junior high and high school, and I am really shaped into who I am today because of the dedicated people, hard work, sportsmanship, and commitment I was surrounded by and learned about in Marching Band. I can't even express how fortunate I feel to have been able to be part of a group that very few schools offer, and furthermore, one that is so successful, not just in competition, but in terms of hard work and teamwork. One of the last that I would like to talk about is my last high school musical, The Addams Family, which if you saw, I was going as Addams. <laughs> this year, our local music department really struggled, and a lot of the students really felt the brunt of that. But with the wonderful guidance of Mr. Romanow, Ms. Kutowski, and Ms. Krumbach, um, it was probably the most successful production that I've ever been a part of. And it was so comforting to know that even when faced with adverse circumstances, New Hartford, um, did not cease to provide us with the opportunities that we had in the past. And they didn't just give it up, even though that is probably what was the easy thing would have been to do for the school. And I just have no words to describe how thankful I am for that. Um, so we're all approaching our last class, which is graduation. Um, and it's bittersweet, but I'm definitely proud to say that this was my alma mater. And I'm really thankful for all the opportunities that we had.
Hi, I'm Julia D'Ambrosio. I am a graduating senior at New Hartford. I am president uh, of the senior class, and I am vice president of the National Honor Society for Honor Six. <laughs> uh, this fall, I will be attending Fordham University on the pre-law track. Uh, I don't think I would be heading to, uh, I don't think I would have been applying to such prestigious universities if it had not been for the opportunities and privileges that this school has provided me with. And this school has truly shaped me into the person I am today. So one of the things I believe is most important to teach during secondary education is independent thinking. Every teacher with whom I've had a class has taught me that my voice is unique from all others, and that it is important to share that voice in order to catalyze progressive change, both in the classroom and in the outside world. Most of my AP courses have had a seminar portion where students are encouraged to speak their minds and respect others' opinions. We often put things in a global perspective and discuss worldwide issues that affect us personally and in the society around us. The faculty at New Hartford, along with the courses and extracurriculars offered, have made me more aware of the wide array of problems affecting the world I am about to enter. However, it is because of my time here that I am inspired to initiate grassroots change as a global citizen. My time spent taking international humanitarian law with Mrs. Hamilton and acting as an attorney on our school's varsity mock trial team with Mr. Anderson have inspired me to pursue a career in law where I hope to aid the underserved. Before I was even thinking about law school, I knew I wanted to major in history. Like maybe all future history majors that leave New Hartford, I made this decision while sitting in Mr. Walker's room, <laughs> listening to a riveting lecture on European. I am excited that our school district has taken advantage of the incredible opportunities that futures in STEM studies hold, as I think that science and technology will play a key role in helping to solve worldwide problems. This year I traveled with my fellow AP environmental science classmates to Costa Rica, where we learned about the importance of the natural rainforest and the remarkable amount of power that renewable energy can generate. I would like to thank everyone who made that incredible trip possible. So while I've had great experiences learning about math and the natural world, I do ask that this school district help change STEM to STEAM and to continue to equally embrace the arts and the liberal arts. I believe that education should be a balance between the humanities, sciences, and mathematics. And I would love to see an equal amount of AP courses between these three areas of Perhaps the addition of AP art history or AP world history could be considered in the future. When I step out of New Hartford Senior High for the last time this June, I will leave as a student that is prepared for anything that is thrown at me. This school has taught me to face every problem head on, think critically, have a positive outlook, and a creative attitude. When I think about my sister entering this high school in a few years, I am excited that she will be given the same care, <coughs> attention, and opportunities that I have received during my years here. I am proud to have been a student of New Hartford. I take pride in the variety of courses that are offered. I take pride in the amount of technology that is available for student use. I take pride in the Board of Education's response to Cuomo's education reforms. And I take pride in having so many wonderful teachers. Thank you all so much for what you have done to uplift, challenge, and strengthen the students at this school. Hi everyone, my name is Simrit Singh. Uh, I've presented in front of you before, but I'm also a graduating senior this year. Um, I am the co-founder and president of Leadership Court. I am the corresponding secretary for a senior class and I was the Secretary General for the Upper Mohawk Valley Model United Nations Conference this year, hosted by New Hartford. Uh, this fall, I plan on attending Dartmouth College to study economics, mathematics, and public policy. Um, I'm going to start off by saying I'm a huge nerd. <laughs> and, uh, 
<laughs> for that reason, my education here at New Hartford has just been extremely enriching. Uh, I'm that kid that quizzes my friends on what the latest CNN polls were. I was super excited to vote. I just registered today in the lobby. Um, and I was that kid that had to go to Hamilton to take the next class in math and French. Um, but my favorite thing when I describe my New Hartford experience is when people ask me, when they realize I'm a nerd, and they ask me, how were your four years of high school? Did you enjoy them? My favorite thing is that I can think of nothing but loving and hilarious memories to describe to them about my entire experience here at New Hartford. Um, New Hartford really taught me that a balance can be struck, uh, that a balance can be created between an academic education and an education about your surrounding and the world around you. The world that we'll be entering when we graduate on June 27th. Um, it taught me about exposure. I think the one thing New Hartford does really well is it goes one step further than most public schools in showing that there needs to be a connectedness between what you learn in the classroom and how that can apply to your community and the world around you. And that's, I think, what I truly valued about this. New Hartford taught us that an education isn't just a PowerPoint and a textbook and an end of the year final. It's learning about an issue and discussing and debating it in your classroom and then utilizing your opportunities that our community has provided us to then help us understand um, the world and apply our own knowledge when we go into the workforce. Um, I have a couple experiences from my four years here in the high school that have really described this connectedness. Um, this year, I chose to take AP, AP Macroeconomics. It's a tough course, not gonna lie, but I ended up really loving it. And it provided us with the opportunity to attend the Be Entrepreneurial Day at the Hartford. It connected our learning in the classroom, the inflation, deflation, total GDP, to an experience to at the Hartford was a community organization that really taught us what it would be like to one day start your own company in one day. That then enriched me extracurricularly by providing us the opportunity to actually start our own company. Um, this last, uh, these last four months, I've been part of um, a company organization at the Hartford that has given us the support to actually start our own company. And we're liquidating our company tomorrow, and in six weeks, we've made $2,500. So pretty impressive. I was really happy with that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but this connectedness can work in the opposite way as well. Uh, as you know about Leadership Corps, three years ago, um, two other seniors, as well as myself, we attended a leadership camp at Hamilton College called Leaders for Life. Uh, the skills and the experiences that we developed there have really imp impacted us in an influential way and that we felt that those skills and experiences could be brought to the entire New, New Hartford student body at the high school. Uh, after presenting in front of us, you gave us that opportunity to make leadership part of our academic education as well, to show us that leadership is not just a skill that you'll learn at some point in your life, but that we can learn even before we graduate. And that connectedness, that just describes my entire experience here. Uh, that's, that's what I looked for when I applied to uh, a college as well. I looked for a college that would provide me insight academically, but would also connect me with opportunities to utilize that information. Um, the only suggestion I could add to our education here at New Hartford is to enhance that connectedness. Uh, this last summer, I attended a camp at the Wharton School of Business, and one of my friends, uh, she went to a public school in Cleveland, Ohio and she took a class her senior year, a capstone class called New Dimensions, and it combined anthropology, sociology, psychology, and philosophy while debating current issues, connecting them with literature and famous literary texts, and then connecting them with the community around her and even global experiences. Uh, she debated some of the most famous literary works while discussing some of the most controversial topics in a purely academic environment, but then allowed her, they end, uh, they end the trip, uh, class with a trip to New York City that truly connects this information to certain events going on globally at the time. This connection is truly what I've appreciated here at Hartford. It's helped me start a company before I graduate. It's helped me develop leadership skills before I graduate. And it's helped me plan an entire conference about international relations before I graduate. And for that reason, I 
hope that these same experiences and the same connectivity can be prolonged for future generations of New Hartford alumni. Thank you. What did you sell to make $2,500 in six weeks? We sold, uh, it's actually a problem that my sister and I have been having a lot. Um, we have iPhones and our cables tend to break a lot. And so we developed a product that would prevent the breakage of the cable. It's like an accessory for your cable. Uh, and it's $5 and we've been selling them. <laughs> I'm not trying to sell them for you. But <laughs> Uh, yeah, they've, they're charger accessories, and that way I don't have to spend thirty dollars on my next cable. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much. It is. Uh, I know I speak for the entire board when I say we love to hear students come and speak to us. You guys have incredibly impressive uh, credentials, and people is important. You are incredibly good public speakers, so you are no doubt going to be the best ambassadors for New Hartford as you go out into the world that we can ask for. So thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we are now to the introduction of candidates. So again, we have two candidates running for one Board of Education seat. They are Beth Sox Coons and Alexis Angora. And uh, first up on the list is Ms. Coons. Uh, I'd like to go to the table. Okay. 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 So much easier when I have the podium in front of me. I'm sorry, you guys didn't move. Um, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Um, I have 20 years living in the district. I have three children, one in Bradley, one in Perry, one in high school. So I'm covering all three levels of school here. Um, I think the question that I've been asked most often over the past few weeks since the campaign began is, why are you running again? Um, and I think that's an important question to answer. I personally am a product of public education, and I really strongly believe in public education. And I feel like that publication, public education is really being threatened right now. I grew up in poverty, and I really understand firsthand the role that education can play in changing a child's life. Mine was profoundly changed by some excellent teachers. Um, as I mentioned, I have three children in the district. Um, they have, like most kids, um, three completely different sets of learning abilities and learning styles. Um, I want to make sure that New Hartford will continue to serve their different needs, both in regular education and through CSE. Um, and I've learned a lot in the last five years, and I think that that experience can continue to serve the district. Um, so I've been proud to serve for the past five years. There's a lot of different things that I'm really proud of. Um, we've passed five successful budgets in the last five years. We've had, in spite, as I mentioned before, um, a cumulative loss of $20 million in aid, both from the GEA and the found, loss of foundation aid. In spite of that, we've worked dil diligently. We have not laid off a single teacher. We have not increased class sizes. And we have not eliminated any programs. In fact, through careful planning, we have added classes. We've improved technology and resources to enrich curriculum, including two new language labs. Two new language labs at Perry and High School. We've also fully implemented our school safety officer program and maintained New Hartford's reputation as a top school district. We have continued to maintain the only local teacher center for continued teacher development. I personally have been a vocal advocate and in conjunction with the board in opposition to the New York State imposed funding cuts, the gap elimination reduction, which as Bob pointed out, still is eliminating $780,000 from our budget in spite of the fact that there is no longer a gap. Um, in opposition to field testing our students, and also in opposition to the education plan that Governor Cuomo introduced as part of this year's budget. We have met face-to-face -face with legislators to express our concerns and continue to do so. I'm proud of the role that New Hartford has taken. It's been a leadership role in opposition to the agenda. In fact, the um, position that the Board of Education took was used as an exemplar for many other community districts. I look forward to continuing to being a vocal advocate for our district, for our teachers, and for our children. I've acted with honesty and integrity and with no personal agenda, balancing the views of multiple constituencies. I would be honored to have your vote on May 19th and continue my service to the district. Thank you.
evening, everyone. My name is Alexis Tiangora, and I'm uh, running for school board. In regards to some of my background, uh, I've been a lifelong resident of upstate New York, born and, born and raised here. I have lived in Albany, Syracuse, and Buffalo, and went to school locally and at Albany. Um, we've been living here in New Hartford for eight years. My husband is here this evening. Our children are home with my sister. And um, why did you choose New Hartford? Like so many of you that may have located here to the district for all the academic, um, athletic, and arts, and the music programs that we have to offer here. Um, what really got me to this particular point is fall of 2013 started really the full impact of the Common Core agenda. And at that time, I stood with a group of parents that opposed the Common Core initiative. And at that time, the group, I think, was not looked upon very uh, favorably um, in regards to why we were opposing it. And certainly this year, with the governor's agenda, he's um, deepened his drive in regards to pushing the Common Core and some of the things that um, he would like to see accomplished in the Ed Department. Um, I've started attending at that point informational meetings starting back when the uh, local assembly had a meeting at the BOCES and I've attended parent-teacher court, task force meetings, board of ed meetings for the last two years and um, continue to have conversations with other parents and teachers. Concerns that I have among some of um, the board members as well is the common core and, it's, and the agenda that the governor has the APPR performance review. I, I was opposed to tying teacher evaluations last year when, in 2013 when it first rolled out. Certainly um, this year again, went now that he's up the ante in regards to uh, a heavier weighting in regards to teacher evaluations. And we know that the governor is pushing for a, a regional control over local control. We have this wonderful school district um, going the way we want it. And we also need to be a leader as far as the school district and uniting with other districts to maintain local control and fight the drive for regional control over schools. And certainly school funding. Um, you heard the budget reviews this evening and the governor continues not to fund schools as he should, even though he touts commercials on TV that he is a governor for education. So I do believe that you know the, the board has taken some steps forward and being a leader in regards to the local forum, I think maybe it might have been a little bit late. Um, I think we can do more as a board to motivate and drive local communities and other school districts to move forward and again push Albany to reconsider some of these um, proposals that they have. The fiscal responsibility, again, we are not a wealthy district in this particular area. We have a lot of more rural areas around us that are not as, as fortunate as we are here in New Hartford. And I just don't believe that year after year, we can continue to compound school tax increases for the last five years, et cetera. Um, I do think, again, this is the drive that the board has to unite with other school districts and move towards Albany and push them to fund schools appropriately. But because you can, we're one of the highest tax states in the country, and we can't continue to raise taxes. There are people we just cannot afford it. We don't have a huge influx of business coming into the state. So I do believe that we need to lobby our local officials, fighting all these particular um, agendas, that continuing to eliminate the, the gap that he has in regards to the gap elimination, um, and devise a new formula for, for, for aiding schools. We know for decades the school funding formula has been very wrong. They're not funding schools appropriately throughout the state, whether you're a district with more money or a poorer district. So if elected, I too would like to continue to have the drive to ensure that all our educational needs are met for our students. English language, special needs and poverty certainly. Continue with the um, AP classes and you can see witness to some of these students that have got up and spoke that participate in those type of programs continue to attend Common Core education se sessions and have a welcoming environment for taxpayers and teachers and community members to come to meetings and give their ideas. Only through opening up and hearing other people's ideas can we really move forward in trying to continue to be pro progressive. So I ask that I um, would be graced with your vote for board and I thank you very much for your time.
Okay. Uh, well, I want to thank you both for your willingness to run. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you all for coming out. I appreciate you spending some time with us tonight. Please remember to vote May 19th, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the high school gym. And have a great evening.